This is one of sport's great proving grounds, a gateway to glory where heroes are made. 26 tournaments across 16 countries on three continents. It's an eight-month campaign to determine the very brightest prospects in golf. Finish the season in the top 20 on the Road to Mallorca rankings, and you'll secure a golden ticket to join Europe's best. That is the dream shared by all who compete on the Challenge Tour. There's a lot of learning to be done in a space of just only a year. The competitiveness on Challenge Tour is becoming great every year, and the guys are fighting really hard to get that spot to get on the main tour. There's a lot of opportunity over here, and you want to be a global superstar, you know, when you're playing. The journey to golfing stardom can be both long and complex, but the Challenge Tour's role along that route is clearly defined. Success at national level is rewarded with a place on the continent's satellite tours, a combination of four developmental circuits, each based in a different region of Europe. A top five finish on any one of these qualifies you for the Challenge Tour, where you join those already on the fringes of the big time. Challenge Tour graduates permeate the very highest level of the modern game, and it's the dream of playing alongside these stars that inspires each new generation. As for the class of 2021, well, their future will be determined this November at the season-ending grand final in Mallorca. Only the top 45 ranked players will be invited to compete at that stage, so there is real incentive to make a strong start to the season. And the 2021 Road to Mallorca campaign gets underway 7,000 kilometers south in the Rainbow Nation and begins with a three-week South African swing co-sanctioned with the Sunshine Tour. Our first tournament takes us just under two hours from the city of Johannesburg to Euphoria Golf Estates for the Limpopo Championship and to a course designed by Annika Sorenstam, which will provide a stiff test. But it's a chance for our class of 2021 to get back to competition and put last year's COVID blighted season behind them. Oh, you have no idea. Last year was uh, a little bit rough. Um, I came out to the season with a lot of confidence and a lot of, you know, hope for a great season. Look, it's, it has been tough. I mean, I, I wasn't able to practice anywhere. I didn't have any sort of facility to go to to, to do anything. We, we live in an apartment. You know, we were expecting the baby, so we were kind of just spending the time together and preparing for that more so than anything else. Everybody would want to forget last year. It was difficult for everyone and it was strange. We didn't really get to play. and. You now you sort of feel like you're starting all over again. This is what I love to do and I'm really looking forward to start playing again. It's been about five months since we last competed. It's a lot of golf, obviously, throughout, throughout the season. You never know, the margins in this game are so small at any level. You've just got to keep the head down and, and it's that old cliche in golf, one shot, one tournament at a time, essentially, when it's a long season. At the end of the day, i got to get a full card in Europe on the main tour and finally again get off this sort of fence that I've been sitting on for a couple of years now. I would imagine that for everyone playing here, it's, it has to be top 20 in the rankings. I mean, otherwise there wouldn't be any point playing here. Well, if I was to choose between a win or the top 20, I would any day choose the top 20. It literally comes down to the wire every year. You've got to get on the podium, you've got to get a win or two under your belt. And so you, you definitely need a few things to go your way to get that. Just the game itself, it's beautiful. It's, uh, you don't have to lie on anybody else. You're against the golf course every time. Well, there was an early start for the players to begin the 2021 season as they warmed up overlooking the African bushveld. And at 6.30 local time, South Africa's Luca Filippi got proceedings underway. The road to Mallorca off and running.
At the business end of the action, three days in, the top of the leaderboard contained a tightly packed posse of players. Norway's Christian Crow Johansson was among them at six under. Alongside him, Pretoria's Oliver Becker. With the event being co-sanctioned with the Sunshine Tour, a positive final round here could see him gain career-changing Challenge Tour status. And a face many will recognise, Brandon Stone, a three-time European Tour champion and Rolex Series winner who's come close but doesn't have a Challenge Tour title on his impressive CV. At the top of the leaderboard after day three, Daniel Danny Van Tonda, a man who's won seven times on the Sunshine Tour and who's brimming with confidence after his recent breakthrough victory on the European Tour at the Kenya Savannah Classic. So a two-shot lead for Van Tonda through 54 holes. And another familiar name in the chasing pack at six under was four-time European Tour winner and a man looking to return to the big time, Marcel Seen. But it wouldn't be a day to remember for the German. Though this birdie putt eventually dropped on his third hole, he would in fact drop five shots in his last two holes to slip away to a tie for 25th. Brandon Stone was two under playing the par five ninth. And how about this for imagination and skill? A low runner which chases all the way onto the green and up to about six foot. He converts for eagle, but then started to drop shots on the homeward nine. To Henny Duplessis, who started the day four behind and chipped it close for a closing birdie at 18 to get in at eight under and set the target. Oliver Becker was trending, but then seemed to stall on his back nine with nine straight pars, finishing two under for the day and eight under for the tournament. A very up and down round for Van Tonda though. Four bogeys and this his fourth birdie of the day on the last for a level par 72, which saw him into a quartet at eight under with Stone, Duplessis and Becker. So it was back to the par five 18th for a four man playoff involving Duplessis, Van Tonda, Becker and Brandon Stone. With the others in trouble, Stone showed his class with a lovely chip, which set up a putt for birdie and the win. None of the others could match that, and Brandon Stone collects his first Challenge Tour title. Scotland's Craig Howie and Aussie Dayan Lawson played their way onto the final leaderboard on a day dominated by the home talent, led by a rock-solid Stone, claiming that elusive Challenge Tour trophy. Brandon Stone. I think... Uh... I mentioned it to the guys at the start of the week. That's one of those things that's been kind of been on that grudge list with regards to professional golf and uh, very happy to get that monkey off my back. So as the dust settles on the first event of the Challenge Tour's gruelling schedule, at least the players didn't have too far to travel for their next adventure. Yes, it was destination Cape Town for the Baines Whiskey Cape Town Open, being staged at the wonderful Royal Cape Golf Club. In the shadow of Table Mountain lies South Africa's oldest golf course. A classic Parkland test, it provides a wonderful challenge. No wonder it's hosted the South Africa Open 10 times. Winners at Royal Cape include Gary Player, Ernie Els, Mark McNulty and Trevor Immelman, to name just a few. But before we got down to business, we ventured out and about down in Colt Bay with two Englishmen, a long way from home, but with time to reflect on a turbulent year. It's beautiful, to be fair. I, I was here in Cape Town last year and obviously only saw the, the real touristy bits like Camps Bay and stuff like that. So I've got to be honest, I think it's probably one of my favorite places in the world. It's beautiful. I love coming down to South Africa. I love the place, I love the food, I love the wine, the golf courses are fantastic. I just really enjoy starting the season down here because I know as soon as we get down here, we're ready to go. I like being down on uh, Scarborough Beach for a minute. I don't know, I don't go that far north. <laughs> <laughs>
in between all this, what's gone on with the pandemic at home. I've changed coach, I've done a hell of a lot of work. I really, you know, I'm quite happy with my golf again. I, I don't think I was a very happy person last year and we've had a, a real tough time. Obviously, well, the world's had a real tough time, so it's, it's great to sort of be back enjoying it. <laughs> He's a big old boy. <laughs> Never been that close to one before. Um, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit uh, taken back when it jumped out of the water there. But it's cool how they like they just hang around. You know, obviously they're waiting for their dinner. We're very fortunate to be in the position we're in, and I think probably this whole thing, what's happened with the world, has certainly brought that to the forefront of your mind. That actually, what we do is. Pretty cool. We're all chasing that, you know, that European tour card. We're all chasing trying to win a golf tournament. Biggest goal this year is to try and enjoy myself more than anything. That's a disappointment. <laughs> 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 I was expecting a big tuna to come out there. Just go out there and, and play the golf I know I can play in because now our season started. No weekend play for Evans, but this is how things look through 54 holes in Cape Town. South Africans Blau and Skitty Cat tied for the lead with Spain's Santiago Tario and an international chasing pack. Santiago Tario will have been disappointed not to capitalize on his strong position, slipping back into sixth, despite a tremendous escape from the trees here for a rare high point in his round and birdie at the seventh. But things were going rather better for Blau. Starting with two birdies in his opening seven holes, he made it three here at the par 5 11th to keep his nose in front. Further back, the lefty Luke Yearling backed up a Saturday 67 with a closing 66, including an impressive eagle here at the seventh, en route to a share of third place. Michael Lindbergh finished alongside him, the 28-year-old Swede signing off with a round of 68. With an impressive birdie on the 16th, Ewan Ferguson made it notable back-to-back -back 67s, completing the ties in third. JC Ritchie was finding some serious form on the final day. Playing a few groups ahead of the last ones, he was in attack mode. After finishing off with a seventh birdie in a 66, he sat 14 under as the score to beat. Fellow South African Jacques Blau reached 14 under with seven holes to play, but needed to make birdie at the last to pip Ritchie to the title. Just like last week, this one was going into extra holes. Take it away when you're ready. Check, buddy. After impressive approach shots from both men into 18, it was Blau first up with a birdie putt and a chance to apply some pressure. The door now ajar for his opponent. Through which JC Ritchie walked to seal a second win on the Challenge Tour. There was a Swiss double on the final leaderboard in De Souza and Rouche. However, after another strong showing from the home contingent, JC was A-OK. -okay. Amazing. Um, again, it, I keep proving to myself that I'm good enough to play on the bigger tours. Um, like I've said before, I think I still have a lot to learn um, out of our borders in Europe and um, on the Challenge Tour. So. Hopefully, I don't need to spend a lot of time on the Challenge Tour this year. Hopefully, I can get two more wins and jump onto the European Tour. A great win for Richie, and as the sun sets over the so-called Mother City, that makes it two wins in two for the home nation in what's been a fascinating start to the Road to Mallorca campaign. Still to come, the South African swing continues at beautiful Fancourt, where we go behind the scenes with our man on the ground. We've got ourselves a couple of sausage rolls, a couple of pies for the trip, athlete's diet. Welcome back to the Challenge Tour and our South African swing. 
What a two weeks we've had. Brandon Stone victorious in Limpopo and JC Ritchie running out as winner in the Mother City. And our next destination is down the coast in George for the exclusive Dimension Data Pro-Am. It's among the biggest events of the season on the Challenge Tour and we sent our man on the ground, Alfie Plant, behind the scenes. Second week over in Cape Town. Looking forward to my third and final week down in Fancourt. I've never been there before and yeah, really excited. Just having a cheeky cup of tea before we get going. Uh, let's see how the week goes. Got ourselves a couple of sausage rolls, a couple of pies for the trip. Athletes diet. Hundred K down, a couple of sausage rolls, boom. That's stop of the week, straight to the supermarket. Try and get some bars and uh, some food for the course and some food, food for the house. So uh, yeah, here we are. Perfect, thank you very much. Moose, <laughs> give us a wave. Give us a wave, son. There's the caddy over, sir. On the buggy, Brad. Brad, let's give us a wave, son. There we are. Hey. Happily pass. Just done my test. Pass with flying colours. Woo! I feel like it's going to rain today, but um, yeah, lovely area to, uh, to grind on the game. Exit today, absolutely pouring down back there. Here at the Par 3 4th, Otanengua, Sun View. Absolutely stunning. Some wildlife here. The bird is dancing. Little halfway stop here. Get some sandwiches. Just done nine holes at the fan court. It's going on to the back nine now. Absolutely loving it out here. Sun is shining. Absolutely roasting it is. Have to put a bit more factor 50 on burning up a little bit for the old Englishman. Great day. We're just approaching the 17th green here. I just thought I'll uh, show you this setting. Absolutely stunning. Mountains in the background, surrounded by water. You can see the par three, 15, um, and a little peak of the clubhouse as well. So uh, check this out. Look at that. Golfers dreams are made of that. Looking forward to me uh, last week out in South Africa. A special week, really. I've never been here before. The wind's going to be up, I think, and uh, could be a bit of thunder and lightning throughout the week. So uh, I'm sure it's going to be uh, tricky. Uh, the greens are pretty firm here, very quick. So um, it's going to be a real, uh, real test for us all out here. The first two days were split over the Montague and Otaniqua courses at the Fancourt Estate. And as events transpired, Alfie had rounds of 76 and 67, missing the cut by just a single shot. Of those who survived, two men stood out on Saturday. First up, American Chase Hanna, who had an eagle birdie finish at Otanika for a round of 64 and a 15 under par total. Alongside him, Yako Alas, who plays out of the fan court estate, so he should know his way around here. Alas shot a bogey-free 68 on day three. So Hannah and Alas tied at the top after 54 holes. Stanislav Matus and Henrik Stewerhead in the mix too, as are Dan Housing and Wilko Nienaber at 12 under. Into the final round action, and sadly for the fan court members, their man faded. Jako Alas closing out with a round of 74 and slipping into a share of 10th place. 
And the same story really for Chase Hanna, even though he started brightly on the fourth here. A final round 71 saw him finish in a tie for third. Alongside him, Oliver Becker, the 36-year-old clearly on a hot streak after his second place in Limpopo, this on 17, one of seven final day birdies. Two men were pulling away from the rest of the field. This is Sweden's Henrik Sturahead, with a birdie at four on his way to a Sunday 66 and a 19 under par total. Playing in the same group, Wilco Nienaba, the 21-year-old South African, widely tipped for stardom. He closed out with a round of 65 to match Sturhead at 19 under. For the third straight week, it would take a playoff to decide the outcome. And at the third time of asking, Sturhead hit a wild tee shot. He went out of bounds on 18, resulting in three off the tee. And by the time he got to the green, he'd left himself with this 25-footer for par. Get Get oh. Agonizingly close, the frustration clear for all to see. Even though Ninaba was in trouble himself off the tee, he reached the par five in three and had two putts from 20 feet for victory, very nearly holding his birdie attempt. In the end, par was good enough for the South African to claim his first professional win. And not just that, by topping the Sunshine Tour Order of Merit, he also earns an invite to the WGC FedEx St. Jude Invitational later this year. A look at the final leaderboard shows housing Carlson and Roosh finished in a tie for fifth spot, with Howie and Moller a further shot back on 14 under. But the final word goes to Nienaba. I'm, I'm really excited. Um, I, I definitely forgot, forgot how it felt to win. Um, but um, a little bit emotional. Um, but it, it's uh, just the hard work that I know I put in. So let's take a look at the Road to Mallorca rankings after three events, and in 20th spot, it's Englishman Daniel Gavins. As we head up the rankings, having said he wanted to be in the top 20, in 12th, it's Denmark's Nicholas Norgard Moller. Two spots ahead of him, Sweden's Michael Lindberg. Two top 10s for Craig Howie sees the Scott lying eighth, and as we move on up again, Cape Town winner JC Ritchie is fourth. Just ahead of him, it's the very consistent Oliver Becker. Our most recent playoff loser, Henrik Sturahead, is second. And on top, it's Die Data champion Wilco Nienaba. And so we say farewell to South Africa after a trio of tournaments dominated by the home contenders. Brandon Stone took the spoils in the season opener. JC Ritchie came out on top in Cape Town. And rising star Wilco Nienaba shone at the Dimension Data Pro-Am. Our road to Mallorca journey is now underway. We'll see you next time on the Challenge Tour.